So hello, good morning, everyone. I hope you can see me and hear me. Um, yeah. So this is uh, the second session of today's program. Um, many thanks to the previous um, panelists. Uh, they gave us a, a great lead into uh, the discussion of this second session. Uh, our focus is on embedding environmental sustainability in the theater and performing arts sector. And we will be discussing uh, whether and how theater and the performing arts can be agents of change uh, in the context of the climate emergency, of course, and what role the sector could play towards a fair green transition. And furthermore, uh, to what degree might this transition affect artistic creation itself, uh, or the way cultural organizations have been uh, operating so far. In short, we want to discuss whether we are faced with a challenge or whether we should look at it as an opportunity. So for this uh, second panel discussion, we are very happy to be joined today by artist, writer and theater maker Benjamin Verdonk, I'm not sure if we can see everybody. Good morning, Benjamin. Um, also joined by Natalie Driemeyer, who is a dramaturg and curator. And um, she, has a, uh, uh, she has brought to the forefront uh, a wave of contemporary theatrical creation connected to climate change. Um, can we, uh, is, is Natalie here? Hello. <laughs> Hello, hi. I'm part of it, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Eva Johansson, uh, a cultural journalist with uh, a background in environmental studies, who is um, uh, currently in uh, uh, charge of the Project Art Climate Transition at the uh, New Theatre Institute in Riga. Eva, are you with us? Hi. Hi. And finally, Ben Twist, Director of Creative Carbon Scotland, uh, who brings with him a wealth of experience in methodologies and policies of embedding sustainability in culture. Um, we have chosen to open this uh, panel discussion not with a keynote speech, but um, so to speak with a keynote performance. And that this will be Carousel by Benjamin Verdonk. Uh, just a few words to contextualize. Uh, Carousel is part of a collection of small new works by Benjamin Verdonk um, that he is currently showing during his one year long world tour of his uh, city, Antwerp. Uh, Carousel is a work intended to be presented at any time and at any place. It's yet another step in Benjamin Verdonk's exploration of fluid theater forms that evade the tension between making and showing between local and international. So Benjamin, the floor is to you. I, I see it in counter. Um, do you do, can you see it? Yes. Ah, okay, okay. So um, it goes like this. And then you can go the other way around. Well, that was it. That was a that was a work. Um, I am I don't know if it was a, was it a visible. Um, it, it was visible, I think, to everybody. Thank you very much. And of course, um, 
Well, there are two things that uh, I want to point out in, in connection to this work. Uh, on one hand, um, the simplicity and the minimalism of materials. Mm -hmm. And um, on the other hand, um, I think what the carousel uh, brings is this idea perhaps of um, localized mobility, which maybe also is, is reflected in your world tour inside your own city. So could you expand a little bit? Um, it's, it's, of course, it's not the first work of art in, in this uh, concept. Um, uh, you have been working in this um, uh, line of thought uh, for many, many years. Can you elaborate a little bit? Yes. So, so while I was thinking about what I would, what I wanted to say, that I think the first thing I wanted to say is that that all of my work starts from a, an enthusiasm towards the work. So it's not only that it's like um, um, that it's directed by uh, by meanings. It starts out of enthusiasm about uh, what you want to do. So that's like one part of the work, what you like to do, and then the other part, of course, is like the need uh, something external which makes you think. Uh, you have to make this kind of work and there uh, for some years already I'm, I'm making um, my work is becoming smaller not only in, in a proportion and in the and in the use of materials but also in the um, yeah in, as, as you mentioned the kind of uh, well, you could call it simplicity but let, let's say like smaller in, in uh, not spectacular anymore it's trying to be like um, a small gesture rather than than a, a, a bigger one, and I think the main um, uh, the main sentence which leads me through uh, for 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 some years already, which um, which leads me it's like um, I had a talk. Uh, it's already I think ten years ago with a philosopher in Berlin, and we were talking about uh, uh, um, environment and about um, you know, um, catastrophe and things like that, and then. At the end of the talk, the last um, uh, question I asked him, and it was already late at night, it was like, what more you think there is to do? And this man, he answered to me uh, to withdraw gracefully. And this uh, really uh, meant a lot to me. Um, and I think um, on the, um, yeah, this, this withdrawal is of course very readable in, in um, what we as um, especially Western uh, people have to do if, if we think about uh, fair practices, if we think about uh, justice, um, climate justice, um, social justice, um, um, we have um, yeah, uh, too much, this is, this is clear, but also this, uh, this, this, um, this word uh, gracefully in grace, um, um, it meant something to me as a metaphor into into my art practice as well. Like what what could be like a a gracious a gracious way to to become smaller. Um, so um, yeah, it, yeah. I don't know if this is as an explanation enough. Like this is like for me a, a starting point. It's something which I carry with me uh, for a long time. And so um, for. Uh, the last years, my work really becomes uh, smaller because I really feel the uh, urge to be um, as as um, as flexible um, as possible um, towards uh, theater structures. Let's say to the way you are programmed, that you can uh, very quickly respond um, to um, to a certain. Um, uh, on, on, a cer on a certain moment that you don't have to be. Um, 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 how should I say that that you don't have to be asked uh, one year or two years in advance to make sure that you can play there, etc. Like this, this kind of structures we know. But so, so I'm 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 very much working on this this very um, at 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 the moment uh, programming. So this makes it possible also that I can um, that I can react on on, um, on 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 things that are happening and that I really like, and that that I can through my through my work engage myself. And this is this is something that I think is very important. So 
uh, let's say I, I really like the thing, the things I make, and this is the thing I want to do. And when there is, for instance, like an, an extinction rebellion uh, action, then then I'm always asking myself, instead of going there as a citizen and taking part of this action, is it possible to take part through my work, to engage through my work? And so, since I have very small work, I have the possibility to take it with me towards this kind of action, and in this way contribute to to this action um, with my work and this is the thing i'm i'm i'm, I'm looking for and now uh, Benjamin, I, uh, sorry no. uh, along the same lines that that you were uh, uh, talking about your work um since this first part of the discussion will uh, hopefully focus uh, more profoundly on creative responses to the idea of uh, um, uh, sustainability and to the urgency of climate change um, besides your uh, personal um, expression through your work, um, is this at, at the same time um, a comment on, on how theatre making uh, should perhaps reconsider itself in general? Yes, uh, uh, yes, for sure, for sure, and not only a comment, it is, um, it is much more than that, it is like an... an um, um, an, an exercise, an attempt on on on, on showing uh, or looking together with uh, so what what could be uh, different strategies in in dealing with this um, um, yeah with this uh, necessary change for sure. So for instance, I, I refused to fly uh, for some years already, and I have the luck that I'm, I'm I, that I was asked quite often to go internationally. So if I go internationally, then I do it by train, which means that it costs uh, a lot more money. So there are a lot of, uh, and so what I do is I make calculations of um, why it costs more money, uh, why this, um, uh, why I have to do it this or that way. And then I publish these calculations. So um, for me, the most important thing is that, that you kind of, that you are um, in the possibility to politicize your um, your choices. So in this way, I try not only to comment, but I try to look to look for other ways of um, of touring, other ways of, of of making things. And and so I, I like to define it that that um, it's not only through my work, but it's uh, also the practice around the way you deal with things, the way you make things, the materials you use the way you pay the people that work with you, what you eat, the way you travel, um, why, why you accept an invitation and why you don't accept another one, that all these things that they are told, that they make part of the story together with the work. So the work that you just saw is the materialization of this work, but there is a big ID around it and this ID has to be told as well. And this is the, this is the politicization of the work and this is the most important step. And this is, not, this is not a comment, it is an attempt, a way, an exercise in, in yeah, taking steps uh, forward to, to, to what we think is possible, huh? uh, necessary. We, we will come back later to this discussion because uh, in the second uh, part of our conversation, I would like us to focus on the resistance because um, uh, the, um, uh, the, the the creative process is a more personal affair and, and you have much more control on it. But once you begin to look into the practice uh, or the system that supports the practice, then of course, um, that doesn't depend entirely on you. So this is where uh, we, we, we uh, face uh, some kind of resistance from the um, uh, practices that are already in place. So I would like us to, to come back to this discussion, but for the moment, I still want to focus on the creative responses. Um, in your uh, case, the, the narrative and the practice coincide. So the artwork, uh, and, and your um, uh, footprint as, as an artist uh, is a, in, in a holistic uh, way sustainable, so to speak. But I would like to, to move now also briefly to, to Natalie, um, again to, to ask her, uh, of course you know the work of Benjamin Verdonk and, and you have been working with artists that uh, are trying to tackle uh, the, the, the urgent, uh, urgent question of climate change through uh, their creative means. Um, do you think, Natalie, that 
um, this is a trend or is it um, a necessity that comes out of um, the point where we are now in time? Hello, uh, I would like to thank for the invitation um, and happy to talk to everyone. So um, I think it is a necessity. So, uh, but in some theaters, it's a trend. That's the problem. I think if you don't um, really get um, really deep to work really deep in, on the topic, but um, I would like to tell you, I worked a lot with uh, scientists, for example, uh, since 10 years. Uh, that's very important, I think, to collaborate with the science. Um, for example, the first time with the Festival Odyssey Climate, which I made uh, seven years ago. And after that, I made a World Climate Theatre research trip and uh, found out that um, the more countries are affected by the consequences of climate change, the more the theme is treated on stage. That was very interesting. So in Europe, it was not such a lot like in other parts of the world. So. Um, in some parts like in uh, Southeast Asia or South America, it's one of the most important uh, topics in the theater plays. And very often the climate plays, uh, plays are based on real conflicts, um, which are very often combined with uh, fiction. So, um, sorry, I don't see you. <laughs> I had an example for um, example, the little theater on the Philippines, a, a stages the experience of those who have become speechless, fallen silent in their production imagination. Um, the group deals with the question of how a society can redefine itself after a catastrophe. It was created after the typhoon Haiyan, which has this huge uh, power um, because of the heat of the um, sea. So, um, and there's another possibility, the, or example, sorry, the PETA, the Philippine Educational Theatre Association, works with survivors by helping them to break through the um, physical and psychological bonds of their collective, but individual experience trauma by means of anti-trauma workshops, um, which were uh, guided by psychologists and theatre makers. And many theater groups form a lobby with their audience so as to draw attention and to jointly demand their rights from political. Um, and I really like that uh, during my research, I really found that uh, the language of theater links people worldwide. So it was really nice to see how many theater people worldwide are working on this topic. And uh, yeah, we had the chance to work together. I was a uh, adapted uh, dramaturg for the, the time I was um, in Indonesia and the Philippines, for example. Um, I was created uh, or asked to create a performance for the conference of the Global NDC Conference um, of the 350 representatives of the country who signed the Paris Climate Agreement. Um, they were invited in, ba in Berlin and um, with people, um, I we created the Climate Pop-Up Theater and performers and authors from Asia, Africa, Australia, America, Europe uh, were involved. Um, and the people were all based in Berlin or were invited by other uh, cultural institution, institutions for the moment. Um, and the audience was invited to reflect on their roles in creating these futures and the narratives needed to tackle with the climate crisis. Um, I would like to um, um, read um, um, a, a part which Shanar uh, Tabasi, knowledge manager and specialist from the UNFCCC Climate Technology Center, network of the UN city in Copenhagen wrote about the climate theater. Uh, I remember the climate pop-up theater very fondly. After a conference day where everyone was busy discussing technical details on how to solve the climate crisis, it was like a breeze of fresh air to be reminded of the human, humanity behind it all. Climate change is not only the topic of a policy, policy document. Climate change impacts women, boys, men, girls, and other humans on this planet in cross-cutting ways. The theater created a personal setting where the global audience could get lost in dance, poetry, and song to connect the memories of the past and the future and remind us of why we were there. So this was very important for me in the beginning of, um, of 
the work I, I've done in this context, I had the impression, okay, I'm asking always the scientists to being part of my project, but um, I had so many discussions or talks with scientists and they said, okay, it's so important for us to work together with the, with the artists, with the theater people, for example, uh, because the problem or the problem of the climate change or climate crisis seems to be uh, so difficult to understand and to describe. And um, because the principles of cause and effect is um, not really uh, understandable, it's, um, it's a really big complexity. Um, and it needs, um, or there's a desire for vis visual sorry, by visualization for uh, concretization and actually, um, yeah, to work together. So, uh, yeah. and in my opinion, it's very important to create this kind of utopias no, as a positive counter design. Um, so do you think from, 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 your, uh, from your experience, um, do, you, do you get the feeling that uh, when culture and science work complementary, is this a shortcut towards uh, the necessary change, system change, awareness? I think it's one possibility to work together. So um, I think it's important that a lot of people know everything, nearly everything about the climate change. So it's not possible to understand, as I said, the whole complex uh, system, but I think we need now a new way to um, to touch the people, to, um, to reach the people in an emotional way. This is the most important thing because um, there, yeah, you can understand what happens, but when you are emotionally touched, then it makes something else with your, your, with your body, with the people, with the audience. So it's, it's getting deeper than only the information about the climate crisis and what happened. Uh, worldwide. So, for example, the coronavirus, I was really surprised how fast something happened. So it's really like, okay, now uh, no, there, are, there are only few flights, uh, the shops are empty, the streets are empty. So we feel that we are part of the nature, part of the, uh, our body is part of the nature. So um, we were really in danger and that's why we changed everything. The capitalistic um, system changed. And I was really surprised that it was possible so fast. So um, the people from the um, South countries, for example, they feel it now and it's a part of um, very dangerous things. So it's a question of life or death sometimes. They lose their homes and everything. So um, yeah, I think it should be more connected the knowledge of the scientists and uh, the activists as well um, to work together. So it's not only the theater people making some project about it, but it's really a collaboration network. Uh, Alison told it before, it's really important to not making a challenge of it, but, but to work together with their um, scientists, their activists, the audience, the people working in theater. And that's why I created, for example, a working group at the theater where I'm working at the moment, the Hans Otto Theater in Potsdam, to invite all of these people to work together and to create something new uh, beside, the, beside the, okay, we are making this kind of demonstration, we are publishing this kind of um, articles and we are making our theater projection. I think this is the, um, the most important thing to collaborate worldwide and uh, yeah, with all the people are working on this topic in your country and uh, in the countries uh, of the world. So it's, it's, it's quite interesting to see that there is um, uh, a, a wave, uh, not a trend. Uh, I would not say that, although sometimes, as you said, it might look like it's a response to a trend. But um, at the same time, you can see that there is a wave of um, artists and creative responses across the world. Um, uh, that um, f make us feel that theater has a, has a more uh, essential, profound role to play in this transition towards um, uh, what we hope uh, will be a more sustainable future. And, and I want to, to move to Eva. Um, um, you are coordinating a project 
uh, with a very telling title, Art, Climate, Transition, um, in Riga, uh, the new theater institute. So why did you, as a, as a team, embark on this project? And what, what, what uh, shapes, artistic shapes, it will take? And what do you expect from it? Hello, it's nice to be among you. It's a very, I'm very honored to be here today. And uh, thank you, Natalie, for actually uh, putting the really important uh, points that it's very difficult to understand complex systems. Uh, and also it's, emo it's very hard, uh, important to put things emotionally. I would also add practically, and thank you, Benjamin, uh, for reminding about this flexibility, uh, smallness, ethical uh, society and uh, activism. Uh, we are a very small NGO, uh, theater NGO. We are only three, four people in office and uh, we don't have any um, acting space. So uh, I think we are uh, an interesting partner for this European project. And uh, actually what we do, we, we create uh, the International Theater Festival Homo Novus every year. Uh, and uh, what we do, we really try to uh, be socially active, uh, politically active. And the creative director, Gunda Galaivin, she always invites artists uh, who work with local communities. And one of the things that um, what was important for me, the things that I believe in is that um, when we talk about climate change, is to work with young people. It's my strong belief because they are the next uh, decision makers and those who will create the ever, everyday life choices. And another thing that I've actually come in my mind is that um, it's important not to use these horror stories or the, the word crisis or this cascade effect of death and everything else. And as a biology uh, student, I, I really know what, what is in front of us. Practically, it is a horror story. But when we, we start to approach with the with performances or, or something um, that, that you know, uh, scares you, especially young people, emotionally and also psych psychologically, psychologically, I think uh, our subconscious really throws this away. So my approach is that it's important to inspire, uh, to be quite positive and inspire for small steps and talk about val values and processes in our society, which is also working in all levels, which is uh, the social activism and uh, interdisciplinary and uh, eco-feminism and all those things. And one of the things we've done uh, this summer uh, was a really nice project called Party Animals. You can see your, on your screens. Um, we invited young people for, from all kinds of Riga districts to create their own um, identities, the new identities of successful people. And what they did, they had lectures uh, for the two days where they were told about how, for example, um, a clothing industry works, how the fashion industry creates all those pay piles of, of um, garbage. And uh, they went to second hand and they, they got new knowledge how to actually shop ethically and how to create, uh, you know, uh, performance ethically and they helped each other they were not they're not professionals and they worked uh, for um, for two days to create their new identities um, which made them think about what what is the successful person nowadays is someone who has the best iPhone or who has the best clothes or who has the best most likes on Instagram so and in the end they met in a rave party uh, which was one of the homo novus uh, festival uh, performances where actually the performers were young people themselves in their new identities. So it was very fun, very inspiring, very positive. They were working together with really good artists uh, and um, they created their own play where uh, after which um, parents were texting me that uh, um, they don't want to buy new clothes for school and uh, they don't uh, want to be involved in the fashion industry anymore. So by projects like this, I think where we, when we approach young people uh, where we actually um, talk with them, where they create their own performances is the way that we can actually, in the, as you asked me about this project, the grasp this idea of, of um, both social activism and both environmental issues, which are, uh, which are um, positive in a way. And uh, well, the next idea I, I'm having in my mind is 
we, 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 our festival is small, so I would say it's quite uh, sustainable. Like we don't uh, buy things or we don't use plastic or anything like that. But one thing I would do, would like to step one um, step further is to invite uh, good chefs and good um, um, food makers to create uh, food for uh, festival artists, which is used uh, from uh, the food, let's say food garbage, which is thrown uh, out away from the, uh, which is become a garbage from the shops, you know, when they they throw away a lot of pails of food, which uh, the the term is ended. So we decided it would be interesting to to feed the whole festival team from from the food that is thrown away, and also which is of course safe uh, and uh, made by by good chefs. So that's my idea. When we let's see have a, a next festival hopefully in these times so thank you very much eva um well something that was said the, during the the previous discussion which uh was um whether uh that's partly uh, uh the main point of our discussion here is it a, is it a challenge or is it an opportunity i'm i'm personally very confident that um we may choose to look at it as an opportunity. And so far uh, from the three of you, um, the, the positive uh, approach and the creative approach uh, does fortify my conviction that it can be and it should be an opportunity for um, uh, a different kind of future for, for theater. And I would like to move to Ben. Hello. Um, hi, Ben. Thank you so much for your patience. Um, I'll try to make it up to you now. Um, the reason why I, I left you uh, last, uh, but not least, uh, Ben, is because you actually work and have worked uh, for many years on at the intersection between the creatives and the organizations. And I, I, I hinted at, at this problematic relationship at the beginning, because you may, you may have the creatives jump on this opportunity to change the narratives or their practices even, but then you have the system, you have heavier structures that might uh, find it more difficult to A, change, and second, to facilitate change for those working inside them. So could you please tell us a little bit about your work and, and how it relates to our discussion? Sure, and it, may, it might just be useful to know, um, for those of you from the theatre world, I, I've been a theatre director most of my life and only moved into uh, the world of climate change back in 2009. So um, I now combine the two. And the interesting thing also perhaps is that um, since then, I've also done a, a PhD on uh, a doctorate on how to bring about and uh, how to influence system change, how to bring about system change. And we've been talking about system change quite a lot. Um, and just on that opportunity, I think some of the most interesting work that I've done in my whole career has been in the last 10 years, um, working on the intersection of climate change and, and culture. So I certainly think there's an opportunity and a bit like Alison, um, I've met some very interesting people and I've I've, it's challenged me perhaps even more than directing those plays and running theatres. Um, we've, we've done a lot at Creative Carbon Scotland working in two fronts. One is um, helping the cultural sector reduce its carbon emissions and adapt to the impacts of climate change. And I want to stress that adaptation is just as important um, as carbon reduction because climate change is happening around us and that uh, brings some challenges for the, uh, the whole theatre sector. Um, but on the other side also, and we, we encourage um, theatre makers and, and other cultural practitioners to, uh, to incorporate climate change into their work in all sorts of ways, from the practical to the conceptual. But the other thing we also do is that we place artists in non-art settings in climate change projects, because we think that artists can bring a whole set of skills and knowledge and references and expertise to those projects that mm -hmm. actually the climate change world really needs, because mm -hmm. it's with a big, big challenging problem that we've got here. They need every idea they can get. Um, so that's that's part, that's part the two main areas that we work on. Um, but just going back to that uh, question of, of structures, if you like, 
one of the ways in which we worked from the very beginning at Creative Carbon Scotland, and this comes from my research into behavior change and system change, um, is that you need to work with individuals because individuals do bring about change, but unless the organizations they work with are also thinking about change and supporting change and providing an authorizing environment, those individuals can't act. They don't have the agency to bring about change. And similarly, the organizations, if they want to bring about change, they can't do that if the individuals aren't interested in change. And then at the level above, the structures, the, the, the funding organizations, the governments, the local governments, the trade unions, uh, the trade associations, they all need to be allowing the organizations to think about change and to, to bring about change. And similarly, they can't do that unless the organizations are doing it. So we've always worked on this individual organizations and structures approach. We work with funding bodies, we work with the government, um, and we need to push on all three fronts, I think, to bring about uh, the system change that has been touched upon in the last session, and I think in this one. Um, and I think that system change, we, um, I think it was Natalie who spoke about the, the absolutely crucial importance of emotion, Yes, I agree. The absolute importance of facts. Yes, I agree. But actually, none of these things on their own do it. It needs to bring about system change. You need to operate on all different levels and in many, many different ways. And one of the challenges is you never quite know what it is that brought about that change. But uh, it's um, but it certainly um, requires constant pushing in on all sorts of directions and all, all sorts of different ways. Um, and. Just, just sort of following on from that a bit, the other thing that I think has, um, we've, we've used quite a lot is working from the bottom up and from the top down. So uh, when we started at Creative Carbon Scotland, um, I, I was talking to people within the sector and there was a reasonable amount of um, uh, excitement and, and desire for this work um, on climate change uh, from the theatre sector and, and other sectors in the arts as well. Um, but uh, there was also, I went to talk to the government and I said, right, the legislation that you've brought in, how does that apply to the arts? How does that make sense here? And um, by working from the top down and the bottom up, we were able to, uh, to bring about real action and real change. So now the, the cultural sector in Scotland, I think, is, is way ahead and very supportive of this work. And actually, in many respects, has been leading the funders. Uh, there's, there's not, a, there's not a, a resistance to it at all. It's actually very very positive. Um, and, um, and alongside that, I think one of the things we've done is we've used regulation. There is, like in England, um, there is a very uh, challenging um, set of requirements for cultural organizations to, uh, to measure and reduce their carbon emissions if they get a certain sort of funding. But also there's a, a voluntary movement so that many, many people are, are doing this. We have 250 odd organizations who belong to our community of practice, the Green Arts Initiative, who do it because they want to. And some of them are required to as well, but only maximum of about 100 of those will be required to. Um, and uh, I suppose the other, we've provided a lot of support and enabled that to happen so that people aren't afraid of failing. And I think we also, um, we also see, as somebody else touched upon, the need to build confidence and, and do it with a generosity of spirit. We, uh, we, we support, we, we encourage people rather than we're the green policeman or the green nag and um, just make sure that uh, people feel very confident in what they're doing. Um, and uh, we work with the enthusiasts. Um, we don't worry about the people who aren't enthusiastic. Um, when they realize where the party is, they'll join us. And um, um, what we've discovered is that uh, that certainly happens. Because I just want to go back in a way to some of the things that, um, uh, that from uh, Benjamin's, uh, Benjamin's uh, presentation. Um, the, there's, a, there's, a, um, there's a wit and a joy, I think, in that, in that small work there. And um, what we've seen is some opportunities that that provides. And um, I think that the what we all constantly need to do is look for the, the interesting ways of doing things and look for the opportunities. One of the things that came up in the first session was that, and from I, I believe, I didn't see it, but I believe from the young people, business as usual is no longer an option. Change is, change is coming whether we like it or not. And, um, and that's because of the carbon reduction requirements, but also the adaptation to the impacts of climate change. So we, we need to, um, and I think it's important to remember that the way in which we operate our art system now has not been like this for terribly long. I'm old enough to remember that it was quite different when I started back in the 80s. And um, it won't be like this in 10, 20 years time. And actually we need to make a new future. We need to build a better future post COVID and what have you. 
um, um, and and take the opportunity now. Sorry, I'll stop there. You want me to stop? Uh, well, the problem is that we have got just a little bit of time left and um, be because the, 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 we, we uh, got a little bit behind schedule today. But um, I, I want to follow up from what you were saying, Ben, actually, and just um, uh, open this uh, final question to everybody for, uh, for a short, perhaps uh, closing remark. Um, of course, um, we need to rate our, our, how do we embed sustainability in, in the theater and performing arts sector? That was our question. And so obviously we need to raise awareness, we need to mobilize emotions, and we need to change to break through this, the system and the current practices. Um, Benjamin, 10 years ago or so, you uh, wrote a manifesto, which you addressed to your colleagues in the performing arts sector in Belgium which um, basically was uh, like an artistic exercise, uh, asking them to uh, practice very strict environmental rules for a period of six months. And that was, the, this is where you've, you realized, I'm guessing that the resistance perhaps was greater than, than you thought. Um, so my final question to everybody starting from Benjamin is, how do you think we could break this resistance? What is the fastest and, and quickest way and, and, and um, more, more effective way? Uh, Benjamin, I don't see you anymore. There is a, um, okay. I, I don't know if I have an answer to, a, to your question, but what, what I remember is that the, the, the resistance was, was, was huge. And most of the resistance the, um, was like, um, okay, we respect it, what you do, but it should be an individual choice. Like all, all artists, especially all people are free, but all artists are free as well. And so it's your choice to do so and it's good to do, but, but art is a place where you can dream and you could do whatever you want. And then there is this, there is this, um, there is this thought like, for instance, in, a, in terrorist times, everybody understands that his, um, um, uh, individual freedom is uh, is framed eh, because it, because there is like a, a bigger um, a necessity. Uh, there there is like responsibility for everyone uh, to do so, so that that you uh, that you cannot do any longer what you whatever you want to do. And I think this kind of um, uh, mind change should also uh, come in in um, in art. That art is no longer. Um, and this is another thing I want to say, but I will say it later, that art and especially the, the organization of art is no longer this, this uh, free, um, this free neoliberal um, um, yeah, uh, playground that, that, that we know un until now and that it's no longer a matter of, of looking at it as, an, as, an, um, yeah, as a product uh, to be sold uh, as, as, as quick as possible. Eh? So, mm -hmm. um, so that's a, a quick... Uh, yeah, answer, and in, yeah. In fact, I wanted to say something else, but maybe. Um, but but please, uh, because the, we're we're running out of time and yeah, I'm getting but, messages. But please yeah, go but ahead they and are say here it. Together, because... we have to say. Important <laughs> thing, you know? uh, yeah. no. But I really wanted to say something. I, I will say it very small, and that is that uh, um, I believe I really believe in interconnectivity, and I, I really believe the, the the thing will be a lot of small things. And um, in art, everything is possible, and of course, art can a, a, um, engage literally into uh, taking position, into finding new ways, into doing propositions. But at the other hand, I think the um, the value, the real value of art is art. Uh, and this means that um, we have to be careful as well that art doesn't get instrumentalized. Um, and I believe that art as well can play a, a very important role into this whole question, um, but not always as being the most uh, sp outspoken, uh, saying like, ah, we should do this of beware of the catastrophe that is coming, or we should do this. No, art should work on possibilities and this is what art is like uh, showing a thing which eventually can become reality it's like a dream something and also art can be as well the place where um, the, the where you can find um, a place to give um, uh, to give image to your anger to your grief to your uh, anxiety uh, so so art should not always be looked at um, the the thing yeah, because we are the the out of the box thinkers like okay let's let's uh, give the final word to the artist we as well are just part of the um, 
yeah, of the whole uh, trans transition, and we we, we should not um, uh, forget that that um, the the in intrinsic qualities of art are very useful as well, although they are not always so outspoken as people should wish they are. Uh, so Thank that, you, this is uh, what Benjamin. I, I think that's, a, that's a really rounding up um, uh, from your side, uh, uh, from your presentation to, uh, to your comment here. And can I also ask a, a couple of final words uh, from um, uh, Natalie and Eva, uh, and just a quick word from Ben as well before we close. Should I start or would you like to start, Eva? Natalie, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just thought about it. Um, the problem is uh, in a worldwide look that we have to give up privilege, I think. So, uh, for example, um, it's not only a question of the topic which are uh, artists are working on in their production, but how you produce your production. For example, to invite uh, artists from uh, different parts of the country where they don't have so much money and to stay longer, for example, not only for one performance, but if you invite them, they can show their productions in whole Europe. So it's not the question is uh, how, uh, who showed the performance of first, was it Brussels, uh, Berlin or Paris, um, it's really important to work together and to stay longer time in the countries where are you. So, and it's not like, um, so it's really a deep connection and not a challenge. It's how we can work together. So it would be a worse thing to say, okay, international work isn't possible because we have, uh, we have no chance to fly. It's very important for all the countries to uh, exchange. For example, um, I was just invited uh, five minutes ago from the Jakarta Art Council if I could make a video about uh, the work which I've done in Germany. So we can make this kind of connection when we have this kind of connection. And yeah, it's great to um, use the possibilities to work together. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, sorry, uh, we need to start the next session. So I really would like to move to Eva and have a final remark from her as well. Thank you, yes. Uh, so I think it's important to have courage, firstly, and secondly, to really uh, support those artists who work with the climate uh, justice or climate uh, environmental change issues. So I think be example of your own, like we as in Institute, we really support artists, give them residencies, support them in these times when it's hard to create work with residencies or, or giving them a chance to work with these issues. Thank you, Eva. And Ben? One, need, two words. Uh, we, need, uh, we need to stop incremental change and move towards transformational change. We can't keep doing the, the small things we've been doing. And I would say that the, the interesting artists are the ones who are doing that. Um, so actually, I don't worry about the people. I don't worry about instrumentalization and I don't worry about the, um, the artists who resist because I think the really good artists are the ones who are doing it and are interested. And that because all art is politics and that is what is uh, we are. This is a big, big political issue. And so the most interesting art is coming out of this topic. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, it's been a pleasure and an honor uh, to have you with us. And um, I think, um, I hope everybody who has been uh, following this discussion have been convinced now that what we're facing is not a challenge, but it is definitely a wonderful opportunity for the future. So thank you very much, everyone. Thanks again. Thank you.